Hi everyone, welcome back to our video series of case study analysis from the basic tutorial on simulation of microgrids control using MATLAB and Simulink. In our last video, we had an introduction of the four case studies that will be covered in this series. And in this video, I'm going to present a step-by-step -step overview of the first case study. This case covers a microgrid operating in the grid-connected mode. Remembering that in this condition, the utility defines the network feeders as voltage amplitude, frequency and phase, that are all followed by the converters controlled as network feeding. And again, network feeding converters are configured to operate equivalent as current source, acting permanently synchronized with the main grid. In this case, the purpose is to control the active and reactive power imported and exported from and to the main grid by specifying the power values in a power control loop. These defined power values are used to adjust a modulating signal in a current control loop, which is used to control the converter. The schematic design for this case on Simulink has one DC source that emulates the distributed generator, three-phase half-bridge IGBT switches from S1 to S6 representing a DC to AC converter that is operated by controlling a modulating signal, as well as electrical components, including the inverter output inductance and resistance, filter capacitance and dumping resistance, and the line inductance and resistance. Besides, one local load, measurement units of current and voltage, one AC power grid emulator and one control subsystem. Now, into the control block, they are the alphabet subsystem, in which a three-phase dimensional phaser of the measured current and voltage units are converted into a two-dimensional orthogonal phaser, defined as alpha and beta. This conversion is performed using clock transform, and it is applied to simplify the analysis and control of the three-phase converter. From these alpha and beta values of current and voltage units, in this block, the active and reactive power are also calculated. The power and current loop, in which a modulating signal is generated in respect to the defined reference value for active and reactive power and the alpha and beta component of the measured current and voltage values. And finally, the space vector modulation, which transforms the modulating signal given in alpha and beta components two pulses for each of the six switches from the converter. Now, into the power and current loop. It starts with a dynamic power reference block, which ensures the specified active and reactive power values at the steady state response by comparing the reference values with the estimated ones from the current and voltage measurements. From these reference values for active and reactive power, and based on the converter output voltage and alpha and beta, the power control loop produced a reference current. In this current control loop, one proportional plus resonant compensator is applied to process and eliminate the error generated from the comparison between the reference current and the output current, producing a control signal. Based on this control signal, on a feed-forward term corresponding to the output voltage and on the DC voltage of the converter, the modulating signal to drive the space vector modulation pulse for the converter switch is generated. Now, running the simulation, we can evaluate this particular case. Here we can see the outputs. First, the modulating signal plot which provides an accurate response by presenting the alpha leading the beta component by 90 degrees. The current tracking plot, which is showing an effective operation from the current control loop, with the alpha current component following the reference current established by the power control loop. The plot of the grid voltage, presenting the full three-phase AC form in a perfect balanced sinusoidal system, which is imposed to the microgrid from the main grid emulator. And here, the voltage response plot, with the output voltage reaching its nominal value, achieving a good signal performance. 
this plot is result of specified values of 7 kW and 0 kV ampere reactive. For these power values, we can analyze the current and the voltage generated in phase A, which, as we can see, results in the current in phase with the voltage. If we change the defined values of active and reactive power in the dynamic power reference block to, for instance, minus 7 kW and 0 kV per reactive, we can confirm the power values in this plot. And we can also observe the new behavior of the current and voltage plot, where the current is now lagging the voltage signal by 180 degrees. All in all, we can see that the objectives of this case study of controlling the active and reactive power imported and exported from and to the main grid were accomplished. In the next video, I will be covering a grid-connected mode simulation with additional control loops, and I look forward to have you all along too. Thank you.